186 rockets lifted off in 2022, setting a brand new record in spaceflight and beating last year by almost 40 missions. But 2022 wasn't just about rockets flying. It's also very much about the rockets that are getting ready to fly. And there's even some explosions. Of course, we couldn't talk about 2022 without talking about Starship, which sets some pretty big records of its own. So how did the year get to be such a record-setting one? And how will these milestones impact missions into the new year? Let's start in January and work our way up to today and see where Starship and other major space missions now stand. At this point a year ago, we were still dealing with Booster 4 and Ship 20. Remember when we thought they would be the pair to attempt orbital test flight? Starbase also looked very different. The Mega Bay was still under construction, the chopsticks ran their first ever tests, and shielding was added to the orbital launch mount in anticipation of some larger static fires. I wonder how well those will hold up with 33 engines on the Super Heavy booster. Jumping ahead to February, we finally got another Starship update. Elon's presentation at the launch site was in front of a fully stacked Booster 4 and Ship 20. I should also mention that this stacking was the first ever that used the chopsticks, and not a massive crane. Now chopstick lifts are not really anything out of the ordinary. Funny how that works. While we all thought Starbase would be home to a large number of Starship launches, things seemed to change at least a bit. In response to a question asked by someone attending the event, Elon said that the Texas site will primarily be for research and development, in addition to the large amounts of testing that's already underway. Which, don't forget, you can watch 24 hours a day, 7 days a week on Starbase Live. It now seems like once Starship is proven and operational, SpaceX will focus on the Kennedy Space Center and Launch Complex 39A as a major component of the Starship program. Also in February, Starbase got a flyover from Jared Isaacman, who first flew as the commander of Inspiration4 in September of 2021. This time, though, came with a Valentine's Day surprise as we learned of the Polaris program and the upcoming Polaris Dawn mission in which a four-person crew will orbit in a Dragon capsule and, while in orbit, complete the first ever spacewalk by a private citizen. And with that, let's flip the calendar to March. New rocket alert! March saw the first successful launch of China's Changzhang 6A. In March, we got a look at two new Super Heavy boosters. Stacking of Booster 7 was finally completed and stacking of Booster 8 began. With all the rapid prototyping going on at Starbase, it's kind of wild to think about just how old Booster 7 is. Booster 4 and Ship 20 were cryo-proof tested but then de-stacked, our first hint that perhaps these two would not be the orbital pair. The end of March also saw chines installed on Booster 7, marking a significant design update to Super Heavy Boosters. In April, Booster 7 rolled to the launch site for the first time and underwent its first cryo-proof testing, essentially the same part of the flow that Booster 9 is in now. Except, there were some issues. Booster 7's methane transfer tube was damaged in one of these tests, which meant that it had to be rolled back to the production site and repaired in the high bay. Next up in April, we got our first glimpses at an actual Starship payload bay as Ship 24's was rolled out and installed on the stack. The end of April saw the first test of a fire suppression system at Starbase's orbital launch mount. That's an important step ahead of some static fires, which we will talk about here in a bit. April also saw a few major milestones outside of Starbase. Let's not forget about Starship operations at Kennedy Space Center. In April, half of the segments for Florida's first Starship launch tower were built, while the Cape Star Factory's foundations were being drilled. In addition to lots of Starlink launches, SpaceX launched two sets of people into space, beginning with Axiom-1 on the 8th. That mission made history as the first all-private mission to the International Space Station, with the crew of four spending 17 days in orbit. Speaking of, a different crew of four launched on, uh, well, crew four. Just a few weeks after that. New rocket alert, Angar 1.2 had its maiden flight in Russia and successfully reached orbit. The space station saw a new visitor arrive in May. Boeing's Starliner capsule successfully lifted off from the Cape Canaveral Space Force Station and docked to the ISS on its second orbital flight test. This one obviously went much better than Boeing's previous orbital flight test with Starliner back in 2019. This orbital flight test also marked the first time two commercial vehicles were docked to the space station as Starliner joined the already docked Crew Dragon. We also can't forget Rocket Lab in New Zealand, but there's a catch. In fact, that's the important milestone. Rocket Lab used a helicopter to try and catch an electron first stage for the first time. While they did catch the booster, things got a little squirrely and it was released shortly after capture, so maybe in the new year we'll see a successful recovery and reuse of Electron. 
let's check back in on Starbase, where Ship 24 was fully stacked in the high bay, and Booster 7 conducted yet more cryo-proof testing before being rolled back to the production site for Raptor installation. As a reminder, Booster 7 was the first vehicle to get the new Raptor 2 engine variant. Ship 24 rolled in the launch site for proof testing. Meanwhile, in Florida, the Starship launch mount at 39A got its legs. Moving on to June, work at Launch Complex 39A to add a Starship launch pad to the historic site continued. Construction started just off to the side of the main pad, and a crane arrived on site in preparation for tower assembly, while later in the month, the first tower segment rolled out to the launch site. June was also the month that we finally saw completion of the FAA's environmental assessment of SpaceX's Starbase operations. The result? A mitigated FONSI. A. A FONSI is a finding of no significant impact. SpaceX just needs to complete a list of mitigation measures and boom. Um, hopefully not boom, but once the mitigations are complete, SpaceX can launch Starship from Starbase. Pending, of course, the issuing of a launch license, which hasn't happened yet, but is in work. Next, our eyes turned to the skies for an important launch, as NASA's capstone mission launched on Electron from New Zealand. Its destination, the same orbit of the moon that will eventually be home to the upcoming Lunar Gateway Station. July saw another reason to look up, as the James Webb Space Telescope's first images were released to the public. It included a new look at the cosmic cliffs made famous by Hubble. This view of the Carina Nebula allows us to see previously invisible areas of stars being born. New rocket alert, Arianespace successfully launches its first Vega C rocket, carrying seven satellites into space. Unfortunately, it's now one for two this year after a failure in December. But back at Starbase, July saw Booster 7, well, uh, explode. During what appeared to be a spin prime test of its 33 Raptor engines. Booster 7 was then inspected and rolled back to the production site for repairs. Thankfully, those repairs didn't take long. Next up in July, we also saw Northrop Grumman conduct the Flight Support Booster 2 test, a full duration burn of one of SLS's five-segment solid boosters at their Promontory Utah facility. Next up, August marked a major milestone for SpaceX in Boca Chica. Booster 7 completed its first ever static fire and the first ever static fire of a vehicle on the orbital launch mount. While it was only one Raptor engine, it created quite the dust plume. Ship 24 also saw its own two-engine static fire. Also in Starbase, the chopsticks suffered a hydraulic failure, but luckily it wasn't during a lift. Booster 7 conducted a 20-second long-duration static fire. New rocket alert, India launched its new small satellite launch vehicle, or SSLV. While all appeared to go well, the final stage experienced a problem, leading to the satellites being placed into an orbit that would see them burn up soon after launch. Also, another almost new rocket alert, as NASA's Space Launch System, or SLS, attempted its first launch, which was scrubbed due to issues involving liquid hydrogen. <sighs> but don't worry, NASA tried again in September, only to be foiled by a leak involving, you guessed it, that jerk of a molecule, liquid hydrogen. And another important NASA mission made headlines. You saw it live, right here on NASA Spaceflight, as the DART mission, which launched from Vandenberg Space Force Base, impacted an asteroid in an effort to show that space rocks could be deflected if one was heading towards Earth in a threatening manner. September also saw another Vandenberg event, the final West Coast launch of ULA's Delta IV heavy rocket. The final two Deltas are slated to launch from the Cape in 2023. But hopefully, there is a bright future for Vandenberg's historic Slick 6. Next up, after sending a total of 18 people on suborbital hops with New Shepard, Blue Origin took a break from launching people to launch a science mission. However, shortly into the flight, the booster carrying NS-23 encountered a problem leading to the emergency jettison of the capsule, which once again was uncrewed. New Shepard launches are still on hold as the review into the accident is being investigated. SpaceX was working their way up to and including the first seven-engine static fire in September of Booster 7, as well as a six-engine static fire on Ship 24. The latter caused a grass fire, which harkens back to a similar occurrence in the Starhopper days. But don't worry, no one was hurt, and the vegetation in the affected area has already bounced back. October saw another major milestone for SpaceX, as Falcon 9 launched the 3,500th Starlink Internet satellite into low Earth orbit. They also happened to launch four more astronauts on the Crew-5 mission to the ISS. 
But that's not the only space station that got attention. China's Tiangong space station attached its final module, completing a station that houses three Taikonauts at a time. And new rocket alert! Firefly successfully launched its Alpha rocket from Vandenberg Space Force Base, deploying a bunch of small satellites. Brace yourselves as November got busy. Falcon Heavy ended a nearly three-year hiatus as we saw the USS-44 mission launch from the Kennedy Space Center. I say saw, but it was more like heard, as a result of some heavy fog that had rolled into the area. Take that, East Coasters. <laughs> also launching from KSC was NASA's return to the moon with SLS and Artemis 1. SLS finally launched from Launch Complex 39B, sending the Orion capsule on a nearly one-month mission around the moon. This was the first time a capsule meant to carry people was around the moon since 1972. That's 50 years ago, people. Speaking of SLS, check out our metal prints at shop.nasaspaceflight.com. We've got some amazing imagery of the Artemis 1 mission available to hang on your wall. We've even got a rocket garden print that features Starship, SLS, and loads of other rockets from Vulcan to Electron. They don't need a frame, they look amazing, they're printed directly on metal, and they come with hardware that makes it easy to hang them on your wall. Normally, this would be where I thank a sponsor for helping us to make videos like this possible, but in this case, you are our sponsor. So thank you for all of your support of NSF throughout 2022, and thanks for taking a look at the Metal Print Store and considering some of our work for your walls. You can also get calendars. Look at a calendar. Get one. Get one. Get a calendar. Also, right around the launch of SLS, we learned that Starship had been selected for a second lunar landing mission on Artemis IV. How cool is that? It's likely one of ESA's new astronauts will eventually fly on an Artemis mission as they announced their newest class. It included, for the first time ever, a person with a disability. Good job, ESA. Down in Texas, things were getting toasty again. SpaceX officially built and shipped their 200th Raptor 2 engine. Meanwhile, Booster 7 ignited the most Raptor 2 engines yet with a 14-engine static fire test. It left the pad a little charred and tore up some concrete, but it's one more step closer to an orbital launch. Booster 7 wasn't the only thing getting attention, though. In December, Booster 9 completed its first cryotest after rolling out to the launch site. Meanwhile, work continued on Starship 24 and 25 and 26. One of the first crews that will fly on Starship was announced. The Dear Moon crew was announced, which includes fellow YouTuber and friend of the channel, and myself, Tim Dodd, aka The Everyday Astronaut. What's up, Tim, and congrats. Speaking of crew, Orion returned safely back home with its Moonikin passengers on board, paving the way for the next flight to contain astronauts. It also meant that NASA Space Flight and I got a unique look at the capsule as it returned to port. We'll put a link to that live stream and the accompanying video in the description. Thank you so much to the Navy and to NASA for allowing us to get up close and personal with a returned moon machine. And with two final launches at the end of December, SpaceX set not only a new company record, but a new all-time record by launching 61 missions this year. That's 60 Falcon 9 flights and one Falcon Heavy. With this momentum, 2023 should be a banner year for the company and spaceflight as a whole. What were your favorite milestones of 2022? Did we miss something? Let us know in the comments. So now we look ahead to the next year. We asked our members what the top 10 things they're looking forward to in spaceflight, and we'll have a video coming out at the beginning of the year to go over all of the exciting things we expect to see in 2023. I'm Jack Byer for NASA Spaceflight. We hope you had an excellent 2022, and we hope your 2023 is even better. We are so looking forward to sharing all of the exciting events to come with you as best we can. That's it for this one. We'll see you next time. Have a great new year and be excellent to each other.